No more sadness For I am being cleansed No more animosity Finally the chaos makes sense this is a cute place I've just found. I just wanted to use the bathroom and they showed me to this little doorway. And look at this, it's like, and it's gorgeous little facilities for, uh, for doing your wudu here. But actually what's really nice is these little places where you go into the bathroom. I'm not gonna say it smells great because that wouldn't be true. But look at it, look at all the old, the old stonework. I wonder, I wonder what this was. So these, like where the gardeners would have lived or the people who cared for the poor. Because one of the, uh, the things you learn about the mosques. In the times of the, the great sultans and the great uh, Muslim rulers and the empires is that they had multiple purposes. So we sort of lost that today, haven't we? It's one of the things when we have new build mosques a little too often, that's all they are. They're like uh, a prayer space, which is amazing and, and needed, but the community, uh, the communal aspect is lost. So, but uh, the Ottomans knew their business. They knew the prophetic model. Jazakallah, assalam, assalam, assalam. They knew their beans, they knew their stuff. So everything had multiple purposes. So Soleimani Mosque, where I am now, it's one of those places. There was a hospital here. In fact, um, in, the, in the Ottoman Empire, there were more hospitals than uh, fortresses. Just think about that for a moment. And anybody could have access to them. And it was the emperor's duty not the emperor, the sultan. They like to, historians like to paint the Ottoman sultans as if they were emperors. But a sultan, it was something different. It was that that level of care that Uthman, um, radiallahu anhum, and uh, of course, Umar, and all of the original caliphs had for the people, whoever they were in the empire, they had to be cared for it, or it was on their, on their neck with Allah Ta'ala. So behind me, you can see some domes. Those are the uh, that's the, the burial place of uh, Suleiman the Great, and the name the Great, by the way, was given to him by not his followers, because that's this is the the European name. Suleiman the Great was actually given that name by the Europeans because they took one look. Their ambassadors came to. Istanbul, which was formerly Constantinople, and said, I want our world to be like that. That's what Henry VIII said, by the way, famously. Um, he said, they've got, they've got lighting in their streets, underwater heating. What have we got? SubhanAllah. So this is uh, where I spend some of my days, giving dawah to uh, visitors here, just uh, giving them chances, really, to ask questions. Uh, about faith, so it's lovely to look at the architecture, and it really is lovely here. Um, but, but to walk in and not to know about prayer, to leave and not to have had any questions on your mind answered about God, is he one, is he three? I think that's a huge waste, and there's a lot of people doing great work here in Turkey, mashallah, to make sure that everybody has a chance to ask questions. So. How did people used to, I really like this angle. Oh, it's really lovely. <laughs> How did people used to consider the environment? How did Muslims um, bring in the ethics of Islam into their building projects and uh, their way of life? We can see a lot of, uh, a lot of examples of that early awareness of how to live in harmony with the environment just here in Soleimani Mosque. I was amazed to find out from some of my fellow tour guides, yes I am training up to be a tour guide by the way, um, about ostrich eggs. So you can see these lovely, 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 get a nice shot for you, um, in amongst the lights 
that you can see that every third or so there's what looks like an ostrich egg. Well, these are today, they're just um, ornamental. But there were once upon a time, early on, actual ostrich eggs because what the designers found of the mosque was that um, there were lots of creepy crawlies coming in some probably quite big spiders I don't know if there were scorpions but beasties we be beasties that you wouldn't want crawling on you when you were praying so they could have found a chemical they could have stamped on them they could have put down some poisons they would have had poisons then but instead of doing that they found an eco-friendly way of keeping the beasties away from the believers and those at prayer. Do you know what they did? They found that um, piercing an ostrich egg shell gave, gives out a smell that insects don't like. That the insects that would have come and been a pest in this fantastic mosque, this epic of Ottoman design, would have bothered all of the believers. So. The designer used ostrich eggs to keep away the beasties. So no no murder, no, not even a spider getting killed, subhanAllah. And then they, they reused everything as well. Reusing and recycling was also a part of this mosque. So for example, today I was praying back here um, where the beautiful sisters area, mashallah. Right, all of this area here at the back that's where the sisters pray and uh, here where I'm walking right now it's February so it's quite cold it, it, it's really chilly but you go in the sisters area here we're going we're going in the sisters area now right and suddenly ooh, what's this toasty feeling on my what is this toasty feeling on my toes do you know what's underwater heating underfloor heating by water subhanallah absolutely gorgeous and uh, this was designed that the runoff from the hot springs that they had they had a public baths as part of the mosque complex and the water that ran off from that would then be piped into the underwater heating for the whole mosque so you can imagine god it's a huge expanse here um, and there's so many churches I've been into and you just sit there shivering but the designers here were already reusing and recycling their warm water mashallah making them the envy of uh, the religious world at that time subhanallah so how do we reuse our water uh, we've been thinking about that in our homes is that a significant factor or do we throw everything away I've got a new thing right now if I have cups of water around the house I drink them um, and I try not to throw water away because you know what uh, Allah Ta'ala mentions water so many times as a blessed resource in the Holy Quran and that everything is made from water and to be grateful for the water that Allah sends down from the sky and so you know we if you have tap water that you can actually drink in the country you're in um, and we just chuck it oh the kids have left it chuck it so astaghfirullah 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 may Allah forgive us um, what was the other thing I noticed here? Yeah, when I was doing some tour guiding. Um, oh, I know. I wonder if I can find the right place. I think I can see it high above our heads. Let's see if I can get the shot with my new snazzy camera. That's a fantastic shot. Shot. It's a great shot, right? Up there, behind me, there's a hole in the ceiling. There's a hole in the ceiling and what that hole does is it was a funnel for all of the soot because there must be a thousand, a thousand candle, candelabras here, places for candles. There must have been upwards 500 to a thousand candles. Seriously, hundreds of candles and you can imagine the smell of the wax. Um, the effects of the soot. So what the designer did, the architect, was he created a hole specifically to suck the soot up. So it got rid of all that, that harmful process. But not only that, here's another example of that brilliant Ottoman recycling, mashallah, tabarakallah. So the soot would have been gathered. And um, legend has it, because I've been to Konya as well, 
which is a very spiritual place in modern day Turkey where Rumi, Sayyid Rumi, uh, he, he trained and he trained his um, uh, the dervishes and um, the, the ink never faded. That's, that's what I hear. The ink from the soot of the mosques never fades. And whether that's superstition or whether that's true, wallahu alam. But what we're seeing here is, is evidence of the beauty of those, that environmentalism, that, that care for the resources that Allah Ta'ala gives put into place in ancient times, well, 500 years ago, not that ancient. And we need to be remembering that today, inshallah ta'ala. Let's have, I'll give you one more nice look around before we have to leave Soleimani Mosque today. Well, I'm not going to leave actually. I'm going to do some dawah, I think, um, with the brothers over there and see if anybody needs to learn some more about Islam. وهو الذي جعلكم خلائف الأرض ورفع بعضكم فوق بعض درجات ليبلوكم ليبلوكم فيما آتاكم إن ربك سريع العقاب وإنه لغفور رحيم